Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this message. I'm Thomas Fessler, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. All right, good evening, everybody. How the heck you doing? Welcome to Disclosure Tonight, where we're serious about not being serious, talking about UFO disclosure. That's our disclaimer, so we can have some fun when we're talking about some serious things that are going on. Yeah, it's been an interesting weekend. We started off with a little bit of a long weekend. We've started off with the RO report, which I'm sure most of you have heard by now. It's bogus, but we've got a problem. And what is that problem? As you know, Sean Kirkpatrick, for the last month, two months, has been going on a nonstop public affairs parade, going out and spreading the word of disinformation, misinformation against the truth of UFOs, laying the foundation for what we received as the RO UFO report. And coming out of that RO UFO report, Although, as many people within the UFO community may look at this and think it's all bogus, it's bullshit, it's a bunch of lies, the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, doesn't matter what we think. Doesn't matter what the leaders of Disclosure think. Doesn't matter what Ross Colehart or anybody else may say about this. They're not part of the public narrative. Unfortunately, ABC News, Washington Post, and uh, the BBC News and everything, they are the public voice. And what we got coming out of this one, folks, is a big shit sandwich. And no matter how much butter we put on it, it's still going to taste like shit. And the problem with those stories that got out there is those stories led to a bunch of stories, which led to a lot more stories, which led to a lot more stories, which unfortunately is taking the public opinion of where disclosure is and taking years of progress in a matter of months absent of a media plan, an action plan coming from the team who's going up against disclosure to counteract this narrative, it is running freely and out of control. It's one of those things where we're looking at our average Joe citizens, the people out there who are seeing these headlines. I hate to say it. They're buying it hook, line, and sinker. While we know that the United States governed for the longest time, the DOD, they have failed consecutive audits year after year. 80% of the people who have been surveyed potentially don't believe the information that's being put forward. But the truth of the matter is a lot of people do. And those people talk to friends, that comes up, this comes up in a conversation. But the reality of it is we're in a situation to where things are getting a little bit dicey for me. For a lot of people out there, and no matter how much we can say, oh, we're going to be fine, we're going to get through this, we're going to make it happen, Uh, where's the beef? Where's the information? Where's the leaders to come forward, to go ahead and bring it forward? Because, you know, we've had, Danny was just, Danny Sheehan was just on uh, Ross Colhart's new reality check, gentlemen, Harold, he stole your name. (laughs) He's got a new live stream out there called Reality Check. And great he had Danny Sheehan on there, but I hate to say it. Every single thing that Danny Sheehan brought up in that interview, most everything, unless I missed something, talking about going through the National Archives, seeing the picture of the UFO, drawing the symbols, which unfortunately got lost along the way. None of that is new. And we're in this wash, rinse, repeat cycle again and again. And again, it's all old news. Yes, uh, Truth Seeker, we've, we've heard it all before. What we haven't heard is new whistleblowers coming forward. Oh, we've got them. We've got the information, but we're not ready to let it out. We've got the list of the, of the people who are the gatekeepers, but only at the right time are we going to let it out. I know where there's a giant craft that's been so large that they had a building built over it to hide it, but I can't let that get out. I have to ask the question, is the, are the gatekeepers really those who are part of the DOD, or do the gatekeepers extend into the community of the people who are supporting disclosure, but they've got the information, and they're not letting it out? Now, my big question is why. 
if you have such brown, groundbreaking information, they can break everything open. Why are you keeping it secret? Why are you keeping the truth from coming out? Because that's all we have now. Not only do we have gatekeepers in the DOD, we have gatekeepers in the media. And I thought the media was about investigation and bringing out the truth, not going ahead and keeping it back for a story at a later date, whether that's Ross or Jeremy or anybody. They've got great stuff. They've got great information. We're going to bring it forward. So how are we going to get it there? That's the question that I have today. And by the way, when I redid the desk, I built the curtains. Tonight show, you know, a long time ago, and it's been sitting on my machine, and I was like, shit, I'm going to finally get this out so I can go ahead and talk to my audience before we get into the regular show. I know we have regular formula, but sometimes you have to mix things up. Usually I'm worrying about the people in the back and seeing what they have, but now this is my opportunity in my show to go ahead and talk with you. Because if I don't put the time into it on a regular basis, we don't have a show. And just to be honest, my neck is fucked flat out i did i i did an emergency repair on a waterfall in the backyard and it still hasn't come around and i'm not dealing with muscles or tensions i'm dealing with nerves and they're get i've pissed off something <laughs> and i have artificial discs in this installation that eventually they're going to have to rip open and put eight or ten more screws and rods up and back and forth and i'm not looking forward to it so left arm is kind of going out a little bit and headaches and it's a regular thing but it just kind of adds up so if we're here sometimes you know why if we're not here sometimes <laughs> you've got a better idea of where we're at on that note let's go ahead i had to just change this for a little bit because i've got a great we have a great audience of people who come out here on a regular basis and i'm very proud of each and every one of you for being here more importantly we have a message to get out there, but the problem is, no matter what we're going to bring forward, anytime you're going to bring this up at the holiday table, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter's around the corner, and you want to talk about it with your family, you know where it's going to lead. All that stuff, the government found it isn't real. And I've got an interesting video that I'm going to bring up. Let's go ahead and just jump to this one right here before I bring everybody else in. Let's uh, desk, stop, document. All right. Rick. Hey, Rick. <laughs> You're here with me, my friend. Let's go ahead and play this little clip here. Now, what do we have here is a social media influencer whose name I don't remember. It's the message. Now, she's going to say who she is, and I'm going to pause it so you understand who this is. She is an influencer for science and in technology and STEM resources and all those things. She's going to introduce who she is and why TikTok is so important. And then you're going to see how many people she has following her. And then we'll jump across to her next video talking about the Pentagon UFO report. And this is your average Joe Sisson. This is actually someone who's a bit more educated than the average person out there because she covers science on a regular basis. Let's go ahead and cut, play this one little clip here and you'll understand where she is and I'll jump to the next one. Not enough people are talking about this. They're trying to ban TikTok oh, yeah, tomorrow. Oh, and yeah. this time it's different. I'm Astro Alexandra and I use TikTok to teach. Okay, TikTok to teach. 2.3 million followers on TikTok. That may not be that much, but it's still 2.3 million people who follow her, who may see this report. Now, with that understanding of who she is, let me play this little piece here of her talking about the new Pentagon UFO, UAP UFO report, and why I think this is going to be heading us towards catastrophic Disclosure. Does that make sense so far, Rick, where I'm coming from? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it does. It does make sense. All right, let's go ahead and get to this and play this little clip next. It's an eye opener. I saw this and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's exactly what I've been saying. But she she says it perfectly. Here we go. You guys are not going to like this. A giant Pentagon report was just released that detailed the U.S. government's involvement with UAPs. This did include the results of witness reports to Congress, the classified ones. There is a lot of stuff in this report, and they acknowledge that many UAP reports remain unsolved or unidentified, but of the ones that they were able to investigate, there was no evidence of extraterrestrial activity. This is only the executive summary, and I appreciate the way everything's laid out. It's claim 
and then explanation. And they analyzed unclassified and classified programs, informations, documents, and witness testimony. In some cases, witnesses had heard and testified about real classified government programs. However, because they were never involved in them, they really had just heard rumors about what had happened and incorrectly attributed that to aliens but there was no extraterrestrial activity involved at all. This report is the first time I've seen them address so many claims and so many programs. This report is dense. It's gonna take you a long time to get through. So before you judge it from this video, go read it. And in my opinion, I really enjoy the way they laid it out. Here's the claim. Here's how we investigated it. Here's the conclusion. Very straightforward. I actually enjoyed that. This is the most comprehensive government-wide review ever of classified and unclassified U.S. government documents related to UFOs. And if you're typing a comment getting mad at me, I didn't write this. No, but you promoted it. And the way you took at it, the way you went at it, that's the point that was just like, well, I didn't have to say it. She said it for me. This is what we're dealing with. And how did I respond to this one? Let me go ahead and find and bring this one up if I could. Uh, coming from Thomas Fessler over on Twitter. This is a perfect example of where public sentiment about UAP has been taken to without an active and ongoing media plan and serious pushback against the DOD. It's obvious where we are headed. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Rick, your thoughts on this? I think she nailed it completely about, you know, she she's an average person who's a little bit more involved. She's got 2.3 million people following her TikTok, but this is what she's going and, and, and putting out there. She's toting the line of the DOD, which basically takes that foundation that Kirkpatrick has been laying for the last couple months. And then the DOD report is like the icing on top. And she just... Oh, well, she, yeah, she could be a uh, public information spokesman for the Department of Defense. Uh, yeah, she hit it. I mean, she's she didn't add anything other than what the report said. Uh, and uh, and it's a it's too complex for a lot of her listeners. I, I guarantee you, uh, I know probably some of those uh, uh, followers are probably some relatives of mine, yeah. nieces and nephews. And and this puts out exactly what the pentagon wants to hear from the public uh doubting uh the real story the, the story that we know is is true and and putting doubt on on those sto and that story and uh putting out hey you know i went through this as many other people have gone through this and there's so many discrepancies and outright lies i had to actually send an email to uh, the general who uh, the, was the uh, public information spokesman, um, a two-star general, a force two-star general. I actually sent him an email and he responded back to me uh, in a private way that he wasn't going to, uh, he, 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 he said in a way, I'm the spokesman. I didn't gather any of this information. I'm just relaying what RO gave, gave to, uh, the Office of uh, Public Affairs, which he, which he works for in the Pentagon, and to present it to the public in a in a uh, news conference, he said, "I don't know whether the, any of this is factual or not." So, uh, and that's you know that's uh, you can't blame him, but you can blame the people that gathered this information because there's so many things uh, in that document is absolutely false to the point where I think. Uh, our group, I know, uh, is, is seriously uh, considering a lawsuit being joined by some other groups, a lawsuit against the United States government in falsifying uh, factual information, uh, filing it in U.S. District Court in Wa Washington, D.C. Danny Sheehan would be uh, on board with that, yeah. as as will of and other attorneys that we've contacted. So, I mean, this is just so outrageous. And people like her... Who you can't blame her. No. I mean, no. she has a TikTok channel and she's just reporting what she she uh she reads. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly where I'm coming from. Is she's just she can she can see the document behind her. She's talking about it. She's serious about it. She's taking the documents of what's coming out and she's going through it now with regards to saying the hour report had some bad information. Oh yeah. 
Harry Reid is the senator from New Mexico. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, I know. Linking some yeah. st- uh, some of the cited sources to a wiki fandom page. Huh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And there's one yeah, after there's... another after another. There's nothing in there about the Tic Tac or about the Go Fast. Or the gimbal. None of those things are in there. Now they can right. say, oh, wait, we didn't. we're going to bring that out in the second volume of the report. But you would think those little pe- those pieces of low-hanging fruit would actually be brought out for everybody, but they haven't been. And another thing that uh, it was hinted to some of our people in uh, Washington, including senators, uh, senators, senator aides, is that these people who wrote this report never had access to any of the real information. So they were going by what others were reporting. Somebody was documenting that and it's it's a cut and paste. You can look at the report and tell it's a cut and paste system, uh, uh, how they they, uh, authored this. And they would send a a note or an email to, uh, with a, a security email to an office and say, okay, we want an answer responding to this. And they get it from people who really know but want to cover it up. Or, as I said a long time ago, the government uh, has at least one and probably a dozen different deception operations going on against uh, disclosure. And so these people that are reporting or adding or contributing to this our report is is stating exactly what they want the people to know and and covering up the truth behind the real story. Yeah. It just seems to be the status quo of what they're going for. It's almost like, you know, if they wanted to go ahead and interview people at Lockheed or Boeing or any or Raytheon or any of the major defense contractors out there, you think they bring around one of their friends from the FBI? Because if you lie to the FBI, you're going to freaking prison, my friend. You're getting fined big dollar amounts. But it seems like they almost, uh, oh, where is it at? They they picked up the phone, called a friend over at, at uh, Lockheed and said, hey, guys, do you have any UFO crash retrieval, retrievals over there that you're working on? Can you tell us about it? Oh, no, no, no. We don't have anything. All right. That's all it is. Click. Job done, guys. Let's go on to the next one and ask the next one and ask the next one. It's not like there truly was a formal investigation. Now, remember. David Grush gave out information to the ICE, to the intelligence community inspector general, 40 whistleblowers, factual claims, names and locations of places, which Aro should be able to mosey on off to the uh, intelligence community inspector general, seeing that they come in under the, Depe- uh, the Department of Defense and the uh, intelligence community, dual reporting. They could walk over there and say, hey, what's going on with this? Nothing. No answers. It's just a situation to where we don't want to hear anything. Don't tell us anything. Let's tell that to the public. Let's go ahead and take disclosure and shut it down in the public opinion or make it a lot harder. But, you know, Rick, the uh, the biggest thing, my biggest problem with the situation is there's no media plan, immediate, present, or future coming from the people who are behind disclosure, the people that we know. Where is the the point and counterpoint? You've got Kirkpatrick saying something. Where's our big guns coming out and combating it? Nothing. Zero. We've had some little quotes here and there, but I hate to say it, that kind of information doesn't get out to the general public, does it? It stays within this small group of ufology, if you want to call it that, and it doesn't get into the big public spectrum like we've been seeing the the articles from Kirkpatrick and now, more importantly, Aro penetrating the the public consciousness. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, And... uh... I don't think you're going to because I think the press right now, especially the Washington Post, uh, will will say, hey, listen, the government's answered it. W- what kind of news do you want from us? Yeah, uh, they don't they don't want the investigative uh, uh, news people who uh, are down on the street level, pounding the beat, so to speak. Getting these stories from from whistleblowers. No, nope, they're not going to do that. And I don't think you're going to get hear much from uh the 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 press because of this report 
because they're saying, oh, it's, it's been answered. What do we have to say? Yeah, it comes down to it's like, even if you get a whistleblower that comes out, they can talk about certain things. They can't talk about other stuff. Are they going to come up to a level where Grushes or go higher? But you can see David Grush cross, caused a little bit of a bump in the community with respect to the conversation. But the reality is that was July 26th last year, and it's been a steady decline in the public limelight since then. All it is is one pushback article, another one, another one going out there. And I wish it was completely different. If I could have a couple people in that back who have their hands up, I want to make some points before we uh, move on this conversation to go ahead and talk about. <laughs> does this mean we're going to be going down the avenue of catastrophic disclosure to make this happen? If it does, I can say three words. Bring it on. <laughs> Syrup, you have your hand up, my friend. No, you guys made uh, some really good points. I had a question, but yeah, you and Rick pointed out a, a, a lot of information right there. Um, Yeah, she's TikTok famous. Obviously, she's going to reach regular people, as you say. Um, yeah. She, uh, th it, I guess, from my perspective, it seems like these type of people, they're not too privy uh, of what's going on on our side of the fence. Yeah. So it seems like uh, they can't see the falsities in this report, right? Um. My question to you is, if we get a firsthand whistleblower coming out or we get something like that happening, can we get traction? Do we get our traction back? Maybe. <laughs> I, You know, are we going to have to get out? You know, even our picture is going to do it. Our names and places is going to do it. I don't know. It's one of those things we're going to have to look at and see where we can go. I, I hope it does. Lee, what are your thoughts? I think we've come to the point that we're outside of the realm of UAP. Um, we've actually started boil down into right and wrong. Um, if you know what's right, talk about it. And if it's wrong, talk about what's wrong. Um, I don't think this is a UAP conversation anymore. I think this has to do not even with transparency. I think this comes down not even to religion or um, it's even beyond morals. There is a right and there is a wrong. And uh, the only way we're going to crack this nut that we're looking towards is if enough people rise up and say, we don't necessarily know what's going on here, but we have a sense that something wrong is being done and um, we want to right the situation. And if you don't, you as our representatives don't want to write it, we're going to cast you aside and we're going to try it again. Um, now, does this spell well for, you know, disclosure over the next five years? No, it does not. And it actually feeds into what I believe is the DOD and the government's plan, which is this is going to carry out over the next 10, 20, or 30 years. Um, Gary Nolan is on record saying, what do you want from me? Um, you shouldn't look for me to do this for you. You shouldn't look for a singular agent to do this. Yeah. You guys need to rise up and find your own way to come about this to make this happen. Um, and I think he was being very honest. And he also he was also very honest when he recently blocked Patrick from Vetted and right. uh, Skyfire News for the right. main he reason was... that taking things that Gary may have said in private and throwing it out there for the public and reporting on and bringing it out there, Gary loves to go ahead and hit, use that block button and block often. Right. So he so even Gary has said um, your your champion is yourself. Rise up ask questions, do inquiries, um, collect and gather your own base and, and create a, a, a um, insurmountable moment within what you have. And so don't wait for some whistleblower to give you the truth so you can sit back on your couch and do nothing. He's basically saying, let this be inherent. Let it rise up from underneath and then we'll be there to support you. So I, I just think that until we understand that, until we rise up, through this process and say that there is uh, something wrong here. Um, until we do that collectively, they're not going to jump on board and carry us, you know, and, and, and sail us through the, the end goal to get us to the coast. Um, somebody has to row the boat. Somebody has to actually realize that we're stagnant and something needs to be done. We don't need to look to them to move us. We I think actually it's pretty to... obvious that we have been stagnant since August exactly. of last year. 
and I, and, and I take Gary's words to heart. Don't look to me to give you the answer. Do your own research. If this really concerns you, if you're really concerned about this, go look for yourself. And this is where I think it comes back on us. We cannot be disappointed with the results when we actually haven't put skin in the game. Yeah. Great points, Lee. Great points. Steven, welcome. How's your physical therapy doing today, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm supposed to be released next Monday. Nice. And uh, I'm, I'm still going to have to see the doctor about the pacemaker, but at least my infection that I have inside will be cured. Soon. Excellent. So Great to hear. My I'm friend. feeling better. Yeah. Um, the point I wanted to make is that really until 2017 in the New York Times article, I was part of the uninformed general public. And this dif dif this disinformation like that woman on TikTok probably could have somewhat convinced me. Yeah, it probably is all a bunch of crap. But once I saw the New York Times article and I just started digging, I didn't have to dig long. I realized the side of the how much the government's lying. That, I realized how much I've never heard of before and how much of this really is. There's really something legitimately going on. But until I started digging, I could have been fooled by this disinformation. Now I know better. Yeah. So we got to find some way to get a public face. I don't know if, if it's a, a, a celebrity or a group of celebrities that can make a face for our disclosure that, that'll get more people in. And we have to find a way to respond, give pushback right away when this disinformation comes out, because we don't have anybody to step up right away. It needs to be point and counterpoint, just like you see right. on Fox News or CNN. You'll have yeah. the moderator in the center, the entertainer, I should say, because they're not news reporters yeah. anymore, just being clear. They're no more than a news reporter than I am. Actually, I'm probably more of a news reporter. Or like than a town hall situation. You you have know, person something who's that, there in the you know, center, have a person who's yeah. against it, have a person who's for it to be able to go ahead and go back and forth. But we haven't right. reached that point. It's always a particular piece that goes in one direction or the other. And I can't tell you how many new uh, TV uh, news pieces that I've seen. They're just the echo chamber of the DOD. Well, it looks right. like all that information about DO, about UFOs was wrong. But of course, you know, the uh, UFO world is so busy fighting themselves that we can't unify and get some kind of an organized thing together. If we could stop, you know, infighting and get together more, we could do this. But we definitely need to have a real publicity campaign that's organized and focused and be able to respond and do exactly what you said you know a, a legitimate debate situation where you can hear people that are skeptics objective skeptics not these skeptics that are skeptic because they don't believe and they never will but legitimate people who have you know questions and people who can give answers people knowledgeable like you and a celebrity that can be educated like the people in the back room here that can respond properly people can't open their eyes to this I mean, like I said, I could have been easily fooled, you know, eight years ago or whatever before 2017, because when I looked at it, common sense in the real world, both feet on the ground, it's hard to believe in this stuff. But if you just start digging a little yeah. bit, at least for me, I turned around quick and, you know, my and my eyes were open. And most yep. people don't even give it that chance to even start digging. But I got you, you dig, my friend, because some of the stuff we're seeing to. right now, Stephen, if I can, even coming, yep. you know, the story we had in the New York Times back in 2017 that you brought up, there are the people who are doubting out there, are putting out their headlines, putting out the stuff out there, saying that the information about what was said back in 2017 about the videos that were leaked from Lou Elizondo are completely false, but this is what's going into the public narrative. And again, this is the part that's very concerning. Uh, Tom, you have your hand up, my friend. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, I think you're muted right now, Tom. You may have to unmute yourself. Sorry, I was pressing the wrong button. Oh, not Thank at all. you. Uh, I, I'd like to shift the focus of the discussion a little bit because I'm not really worried about Kirkpatrick and the other people on in that group that created that report. Uh, it's a, the U.S. government, I think that goes possibly goes all the way to the top, to the president of the United States, through the Security Council, down to you, down to the uh, Department of Defense, you know, the Secretary of Defense and 
deputy secretaries of defense and all that. It's a policy of, of denial. And they have not changed their policy. And it's basically been in place since the Robertson panel in the early 50s. So you, you've got a situation where, okay, on, on the executive side, they start seeing things happening on the legislative side, you know, uh, Rubio and, and these groups and Rick Doty and his group and all these people, you know, trying to get something going and they even get some legislation passed. And I think on the DOD side, they're having meetings and they're going, how are we going to handle this? They're probably, they've probably got people, you know, for, at Kirkpatrick's level and then all the way up to the Deputy Secretary of Defense and maybe even the Secretary of Defense himself. And they're having meetings going, okay, what, what, what does, uh, what do the authorities, so to speak, want us to do? So you go up to the National Security Council, maybe even the president, you know, what is, what is our policy? And they say, maintain the status quo. Spot, the policy has not changed. Denial and deception. Yeah. That's an excellent point, uh, Tom. I, I hear you completely, and I couldn't agree with you more than 100%. Now, the one thing we could go ahead and take a look at, people could say that this report was rushed to get out the door. But if you got to remember, one of the first reports RO was supposed to come out with, weren't they like th three, four, five months late in getting their first report out. So if this historic report was going to take more time, that they could pretty much take whatever time they wanted. So if they wanted to get it factual and correct and proofed and verified in a way that it should have been, they could have taken that time if they needed it. But it seems like they wanted it where it was, get it out there, because that foundation from Kirkpatrick had been laid. I know we should, we should stop focusing on him, but the reality is he ever since he's left the DOD, he has had more FaceTime with other people out there, if you want to call it, with more reporters, with the Scientific American and other uh, news agencies to bring his story forward than he did in the year and a half that he was actually at the helm. Does that make sense, Tom? Oh, yeah. And it's it's all, you know, it's public relations. It's propaganda. It's yep. even, you know, psyops, psychological warfare, whatever term you want to use. But the, the, the sad fact is the major media like CBS, NBC, CNN, so on and so forth, by and large, they're essentially an arm of the government when it comes to national security matters. And they're, gonna, they're going to tow the government's line rather than sick investment uh, or uh, investigative reporters on the case and try to turn it, you know, dig up dirt on this. And they're just going to follow the government's line. Yeah, unfortunately so. That may be the case. Back to you, Lee. Well, and Tom, I don't disagree with you, but I think it's, I think it's specific to the UAP UFO measure. Um, war reporters across decades have had plenty of, you know, gumption to uh, speak out um, across and uh, speak forward towards, you know, war reporting, um, CB, you know, CBS, uh, NBC, um, ABC, whatever it might be. Um, there's always been an avenue for them to talk about and break a story that doesn't fit the uh, United States narrative. They've always been willing to, at least as far as, lo as long as I've been alive, um, they've always been willing to strike out against and create a, a different, you know, understanding. But if I can about... add in this really quickly, the biggest problem is there has been such a downsizing in the editorial and reporting staffs of regular uh, printed uh, publications, newspapers, etc., and within the actual media organizations itself, that that's taken a toll to where a lot of times in the major news agencies... We're dealing with a echo chamber of whatever the information is getting brought forward to the producer. Let's take it, use it, run with it. And that's the kind of stuff that's being brought forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. But uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it um, macroscopically versus microscopically. No, I'm um, just looking so at it from the overall flow right. of what has gone on with the news since, agencies since, since around the world. Since, and that's where we're kind of at. Right. Since 1990, there have been plenty of investigative journalists that have broke stories that were counter to DOD measures or proxy wars 
that led to an idea and basically the Forget New York Times. Since 1990, or, let's take it in the last five years. I mean, this this runs all the way through like 2004, 2012. They were still doing this, talking about the differences, opinions about, you know, to, to war or not to war and investigative journalism. After like roughly around 2016, this all stopped. Everything came to a halt. And um, never mind the UAP UFO topic. Um, Nobody dares talk about what we're doing nationally in as far as war correspondence um, against the status quo. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that this is not just a UAP centric issue. This is yeah. a complete flat out blockade against truth and transparency across the board of what's going on. Yeah, great points, Ali. Absolutely. Rick, you're, you have your hand up next. Yeah, I, I think w another way to look at this, and one, 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 our group, uh, uh, somebody within our group brought this up. Uh, the RO report placed the disclosure teams uh, on the defensive and uh, with this report, uh, doubting everything that we brought up and others, and especially the 40 or 88 whistleblowers, however you want to look at those whistleblowers. And uh, the, and and um, so now uh, Arl is saying, okay, it's in your court. What are you guys going to do about it? We put this out there. Uh, we played our cards. What are you going to do about it? Now it 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 does force us, uh, as our group, uh, not necessarily me, but people in our group, saying we have to come up with a plan now. Like you said earlier, Thomas, we sit back and we 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 talk. But we don't have action. I mean, our group, Lou's group, many other groups, there's, you know, as I understand, there's like 10 different groups out there, but they haven't played their cards yet. Aro played theirs. Now it's time for our, us to play ours. And I think that we should. I, I you know, I'm 100% for our group to say, you know what? You want disclosure. You want to, you want us to counter your report. We're going to do it with a news conference. We're going to bring our own whistleblowers in. And now we're going to get some avenue where we can doubt and criticize every single line item that you placed in that report. And that's what we and other groups like Lou's groups. I mean, I know Lou placed something, uh, wrote something out there, a blurb uh, in a blog or something, uh, as, as has many other people. Uh, so, so it's forcing us to play our cards. And we should. We should start. We should do something. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%, Rick. It's one of those situations where we need to push back. And if we're putting up reasons why not to move things forward, it's about times to start taking those particular levels and moving them down. And based on what RO's play is, if there's things that we have in play, to move forward with it now because clearly the DOD's pulling out all stops. And if they're pulling out all stops, why shouldn't we? Which gets us to the next point. We'll get in a second after Tom makes his comment to talk about catastrophic disclosure. Is that what it's going to take, Tom? And I meant to went, mention one other thing. The executive branch has a big, big problem. And that is if what we think it probably think is true about recovered craft and bodies and all this, the, the executive branch has a huge problem because if they disclose anything that's truly interesting or material, it is going to engender a tidal wave of questions, and they will completely lose control of the situation. And I think, I think that's why they continue their policy of denial. Yeah. If we can prove it, Tom, if we can't go ahead and have the evidence that the general public is going to take and accept, just try and disprove it because all it's going to do is cause the public to question things. And if, there, if there's nothing there that's substantial, is the public going to go ahead and bite or are they going to pass, Rick? Yeah, uh, I, I agree with Tom 100%. Uh, great, great uh, analysis on that, Tom. Um, we we have to look at this in a way that um, the we're the outsiders, so to speak. We have to look at this in a way that will um, we have to think number one outside the box. Okay, they made their play. They put this false report out there. Uh, I know there are a lot of people there who want 
wants uh, to to file lawsuits and and things against the government. And I think I think that's a good idea. That may be that may be how we shake the government up, especially when you have a whistleblower that'll come out and say to the public, "I know where the documents are hidden." let me go to the pentagon or dia and let me bring out these documents or show you an investigative uh, committee from the court where these things are to prove that we're telling the truth and the government's lied make them make them uh, uh produce discovery just like you would in a court of law and and, and let's do that let's do that and as and let's see that force their hand you know, counter what they're saying uh, in this report, and and make it make them uh, uh, produce or allow us produce what where the truth is. Right. And I think that can happen if we file a lawsuit, and we say, okay, we're filing a lawsuit because of this, and the court's going to say, okay, where's the evidence? Well, the government has it. And you, we're going to file discovery. We have, we have to, we have to show you, but it's in the government files. Let's see what happens then. Let's see what the government can do. Another, another thing that was brought up by the, uh, by somebody that just posted something, the whistleblowers can, can, uh, talk about things, um, up to the level of classification. But if we have enough whistleblowers to come out and say, listen, I know all this stuff. And I have firsthand evidence because I picked up the the biologics or the uh, NHI technology, and I I know where it's at. Not go into any details. They can say that, and that that will cause more public opinion on our side. And then finally, there's a guy on the Black Entertainment Television Network, Jeff Rivera, good friend of mine, uh, who is very interested in that. And I think uh, he has a, a, a number of ideas how to get this out, at least through the the, BA, the BET, the Black Entertainment Television Network. Um, and uh, we're working with him. I'm working with him on, 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 on some kind of uh, program that we can start a, at least a dialogue. I don't know how many people watch that, but um, I, I think that's that's one way. We didn't, I never even thought of that until he... He brought up an idea. Yeah. It's one of those things that we'll have to figure out one way or another to get through. Tom, you have your hand up? Yeah, and I had an idea uh, that might shake something loose. But why not write, uh, take these big government contractors, Boeing, Lockheed, et cetera, et cetera. Start writing, write to the CEO, write to the board of directors, write to the chairman of the board, write to the company the accounting companies that audit these these corporations and say we have reason to believe that you're withholding material information from the stockholders yeah that's been something that's put out there but what happens when they pull the national security card the doe card saying sorry you can't talk about this it's a matter of national security or it's a matter of the uh, uh, nuclear securities act back in 1952. it's one of those things we wish they could bring out the information but they're saying we can't cover this we can't comment on it it's protected how do you get past yeah. that tom the only thing is you you don't know which uh, which spark will light the brush fire. And we we wouldn't be any worse off, and maybe we don't get anywhere, but who knows? It might shake something loose. Somebody might panic somewhere. Good point. They might, and they might spill the beans, but you never know where it's going to go. Hopefully we can get the information to come out. But again, it's trying to force it. And maybe that's where we're going to have to go is taking the uh, the approach towards more of a catastrophic dis disclosure. Lee? I, I, want, I, want to, I want people to understand that we've already won. We've already pushed this far. We've already gotten way further than the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. We've already actually penned the DOD on the mat. They just haven't tapped out yet. Um, they're fighting their way through the eventual loss. Um, so I want to encourage people to understand that we're not at a loss situation here. We're actually on top of them and we have them penned and they haven't tapped out yet. Um, so 
we actually could get up off the mat and let loose of this and say we won. Now, could we battle it out through courts and have to prove how we won? And we got to look at the judge and the judge says, no, I don't know if you actually won or not. Um, we can actually get up off the mat, slap the mat and say, this conversation is over. We're moving on. And here we go. So we're not dependent on the DOD. We're not dependent on the executive branch. We are not dependent on the judges that exist in between. We already know that we pegged them. We pinned them on the mat. We know it. We do know it. It has already happened. This is fact. They don't have to concede to us that they lost. We have already won. It, it, it's up to us how we act moving forward. If we sit there and wait for them to call the game, then it's intestate. If we jump off the mat and say on to the next with confidence, we won. And then we push on to the next thing that we want to attack. And I don't how I don't know how that works as far as the legality and, and the disclosure that everybody wants to the United States government, but I'm not looking to the United States government for disclosure. We actually need to go take our victories, step off off of Matt and say, yep, that one's ours on to the next. Yeah. Now, great, great points, Lee. Absolutely. Now, coming in from Brian Pemble, question lawsuit, are NHI biologics covered under the Atomic Energy Act? Well, if they were part of a craft that had any kind of radiologic de decay that went along with it, potentially they could classify the craft, the craft and under of anything that goes along with the National Security Act, they could say anything with the biologics. If that information were to come out, it could harm national security. So from either side, the DOD and our federal government has the way to go ahead and take anything they want and lock it down. Now, the biggest thing is we're, we're, is we're talking about the concept of catastrophic disclosure, and I call it the Pentagon's path to catastrophic UFO disclosure. If anything, what should we... Well, dogs fighting, hold on. Playing. The way we should go ahead and label it for everyone to go ahead and see is basically it's not the Pentagon's path to catastrophic UFO disclosure. It's the president's path to UFO disclosure because uh, have no doubt, my friends, that every piece of information that is supposed to come out with regards to UFOs, the policy that's followed, how the DOD handles it, this is something that's been ruled under an iron fist since 1947, not just by the DOD or the, the military, by the President of the United States. Now, when the Biden administration first came in, when they first came in, and they were going to go ahead and uh, handle it. They were in talks with Elizondo and others. And supposedly we had support for disclosure coming from the executive branch. But as time moves on, as time has moved on, that support from the federal, from the executive branch has dwindled and wilted to a point to where, no, we do not have support from the executive branch and if we don't have it out there the people who can verify it should get out there on the public record and state it saying that no we don't have support from the president's office and here's specifically why we don't we can go ahead and, and uh come up with a whole bunch of different reasons from from hell to high water but the but the reality is the truth lies within our government officials, the people who are interacting with our government officials, and more importantly, the lack of information that's been coming forward to the general public from the people who are pro-disclosure. Lee? I don't think that we should wait on our government to um, admit our win. I don't think they will. I don't think we're ever going to get that judgment. I, I do not think that we're ever going to get any acknowledgement that um, the MIC has lost this match. Um, that has lost. I don't think we're going to ever get an admission from our government that they lost the narrative. Um, so it's not it's not a fair match. 
we need to take control of what we have and stop playing with them. But the thing is, we're not in control of much of anything. The entire deck, minus a few cards that may be out there, which are copies of the cards for that matter, from whistleblowers, etc., all of this is controlled by the federal government, by the executive branch. So getting them to give it up, give up their control, when they're seeing this as a breakaway civilization, technology that could change the power and upset the balance of order in the world. That's why they're not giving anything up and they don't want to give anything up. And do you think that all of a sudden, because you have some whistleblowers coming forward or some former insiders oh, who ran military programs, that they're going to bend over and do it? No. We don't need whistleblowers. We present facts. We lay it on the table. You can present as many back. facts as you want, but if you don't have evidence to back it up, Lee, uh, you're screwed. Flat the out. evidence, the evidence, the evidence that this is a realization of topic is the fact that it still continues to this day. They haven't put it to bed. They have lost this conversation from the moment that it was wrestled with. Well, you can say they lost it, but right now, in the public eye. They are winning, winning, winning. And disclosure as a action item, as something that's going on, is slipping under the rug. And that was my we point. Like it or not. That, and that was my point. People want disclosure from their government. They don't want it from their own populace. We need a shift. We need a different mindset. We don't need disclosure to come from the government. We don't need them. The The system is already rigged. I guess what you're, you're, you're making me I keep on hearing in my head. We don't need to go to the Pope and have him verify all the Catholic priests right. what they did all the alt, to the all the altar boys. No, we don't know that. We can have investigations, but those investigations came out with truth. They came out with testimony. They came out with admissions of guilt and prosecutions and evidence. What we lack is evidence that can be brought forward in a public in a court of public opinion and a lot of people who have been involved with it to bring the information forward. Yeah, you're not wrong. And and like I said before, um, this is going to be a ground based um, realization. This is going to come from ultimate understanding of people that realize that we do not need our government to tell us the truth. We can actually understand truths for ourselves. Now, we're, we're really looking for them to tell us and we need proof and we need somebody to go to jail and we need somebody to be, you know, hooked out on the line for it. That, that, that's old way of thinking in my opinion. And I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be a jerk against you're what not. you're talking about. What I'm saying is that we're never going to get that out of them. We are never going to get that pound of flesh. So the so when we so what so we have to start looking at what we're going to be left with. What we're left with is our understanding, and our understanding needs to be separate from those that are trying yeah. to obfuscate and govern us. Yeah. Just so everybody knows, the expression on my face, rubbing the forehead, I've had a headache since that started before Saturday's live stream, and I've had a few bits of respite in between where I actually got past it. It's back. It's still there and feel it. Nick, you have your hand up, my friend. Uh, yes. Uh, Tyler, do you believe that, that a cash offer disclosure is the point, like the way that we're going, actually, like Thomas? The cash offer disclosure? I'm most likely. I think the question was to you, Lee. Do you think the catastrophic disclosure is the direction that we're heading down now that the DOD is backing up so much and still fighting back so hard? I think we just need to um, take our wins when we get them, and it doesn't have to be all that. Uh, mm -hmm. th Thomas, I think you're actually better to speak to it. Do, do we need to blow up the whole situation just to um, accomplish what? 100%. Bring in all the C4 we have, bring in all the weapon we have, place it at the base of the infrastructure, and blow it up. Period. I don't have another 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years to bring out the truth. We're ready for it now. We're tired of the pushback and the lies. And if the information is out there, if the gatekeepers, including people like Ross Colhart and others, have information they can bring out to move that needle, what the fuck are you waiting for?
I'll say, what the fuck are you waiting for? Peter, you have it. And then Tom, Mikey there, run this for a second. I'll be right back. I got to get some meds. I got it. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Yeah, you know. Uh, Go right ahead. And, you know, Lee's, thanks, Mike. Uh, you know, Lee, Lee's right there to some degree, I think, uh, in some respects, because, yes, we have this report saying, you know, basically nothing to see here again. But, you know, we've had these reports from Project Sign, from Project Grudge, from like, three different iterations of Project Blue Book. We've had the Amita report uh, out of France. We've had various reports from all these other places. These reports, and we've had the Condon report, of course. And the interesting thing is that we keep getting all of these reports. You know, if there was nothing to see here, why do we keep getting all these strings of investigative bodies? and all these official reports coming out, a lot of them saying that they just can't determine a lot of these things. So it seems that you keep bringing these reports out, but people keep seeing these things. They aren't going away. Uh, you know, people keep seeing these things and that's, there's something to that. You know, it's very difficult to argue that there's nothing to this when we also have James McDonald, of course, and then Navy investigations, Air Force investigations. It's very difficult to say that there's nothing here when these reports keep coming out from multiple countries over decades. So we have to infer that there is something here, right? There's something interesting. Uh, and you know, I'd almost rather with some of these reporting agencies, I think that they're under some pressure to figure out what every single thing is. And I'd almost rather than them try to explain everything to come up with a rating system of how anomalous this is, because they're not going to be able to solve everything. And they do have serve an important function by running down a lot of things that are not anomalous. But I'd almost rather if they came out with a ranking system from like on a scale of one to five, how anomalous is this? If it's only a one, say it's only a one, you know, but if it's a three or it's a five, then put that in there as yes, it's still unknown. Uh, but is it unknown to something that, well, it's kind of blasé, or is it unknown to something that really it has some extraordinary uh, circumstances around it? And that would give us a much better idea than just this idea that they have this pressure to solve everything and write everything off as something explainable, uh, like J. Allen Hynek uh, was doing during the first part of his stint at Blue Book. Hey, yeah, Mike, can I jump in here real quick? Take it, Rick. Uh, yeah. yeah um, go right ahead, Rick. Hey, yeah. Uh, one of the things that I would ask uh, Aro is, you, you haven't mentioned the 77 uh, Blue Book reports uh, that were gathered from uh, 1953 until 1967 that are still classified. Let's talk about those. Let's talk about those 77 reports that are still classified in book number 13. Well, what are they? They haven't talked about that. Um, and the, the condom report, Secretary of the Air Force back in 1980, Hans Mark, uh, brought up that uh, the condom report was actually two reports, one that was open to the public and one that was classified. Okay, Aro, go back and tell us what was in the classified condom report. What, what, what's in there? Let, uh, if, if it's not classified anymore, if none of this is real, Bring that, bring that stuff out. Let's see it. Release it to the public. Let the public see it. Those are the two points I wanted to bring up. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Tom. No. Yeah, go right ahead, no. Tom. Um, Thanks for waiting. Uh, during yeah. the Vietnam era, I mean, there was a lot of concern that things were seriously wrong with the Vietnam War. And Daniel Ellsberg uh, produced the Pentagon Papers, which proved that the Pentagon was lying uh, about uh, progress in Vietnam and what was going on. But he, he had to fall on his sword. And he was charged under the Espionage Act, I believe. And he would have gone to jail, except that Nixon's people uh, broke into his psychiatrist's office. And so the charges were had to be dropped. But I think that we've, we have to have something analogous to the Pentagon Papers about UFOs. But to get that, somebody's going to have to fall on their sword and they're probably going to go to jail. It's it's analogous to um, uh, the WikiLeaks guy. 
Julian Assange? I, uh, yeah. Can't... Yeah. I can't I, 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 no, one, one second. I hear where you're coming from, Tom. That's exactly where it kind of mimics. And it's just a situation where this information's there. I guess you just need to have someone, not just with information about one whistleblower or one program, someone who's got the book on a whole bunch of it to bring all that information and dump it all at once. Is that what you're kind of reflecting, Tom? Yeah, something. I mean, it may not be a huge amount of information, yeah. but it's genuine information, uh, authentic information. Uh huh. But whoever does that is going to get in trouble because uh, an investigation is going to be launched as to who released it, you know, who let it, who let it out. So if and they'll gonna, find out. If they're going to release it, get the hell out of the country first. Don't bring it with you. Find another way to get there. And then when you get there, release the information. <laughs> well, that, that's what uh, Snowden did. Snowden had to move to Russia. Yeah. That's true. That is true. That is absolutely true. Peter, uh, you have your oh, hand up from a science I have perspective. Hand up too. Oh, actually, Nick, go ahead first, and then we can take. Oh, uh, like Rick. I like. I like. Have you ever heard of uh, Donna Hare? Have you Have you heard of Donna Hare? Uh, 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 if I heard of what Donna Hare? Donna Hare. Hare. Yes. Mm, no, I don't. No, I haven't. Who is she? And like he's a NASA, uh, like like he was a former NASA like employee actually. Oh, the the woman who worked at NASA, oh, yeah. who supposedly did all the yeah. airbrushing and the photo, or heard yeah, about the yeah, airbrushing yeah. and the fo photos. His uh, certificate is a uh, is a, a plaque from NASA saying he served whatever it was twenty five years or something. And so uh, he says the same thing. He said that uh, uh, he talked about the uh, uh, Viking. Uh, and the Voyager photos being airbrushed. Uh, uh, the, the Viking one, when it landed on Mars, uh, the first uh, 30 pictures that brought that, that came back, 15 of them were airbrushed. So, uh, yeah, I, I believe him. I think he's, he's telling the truth, and I believe this lady might be telling the truth. If they did it to one picture, if they had a program, and he had a name of the program, it was – something i can't remember the name of the program but uh yeah I, yeah i believe that uh, uh nasa covered up a lot yes right. absolutely you should have a plaque for being 10 years of service of covering up the truth <laughs> <laughs> you gotta deal with it coming all right coming to us from a science perspective peter you have your hand up my friend yeah well it's just going to comment on you know assange and i think that's a case where we can see a lot of these governments have tightened up a lot of these leaks and they've really gone to great measures to make sure that they plug all these leaks and do the maximum amount of discouragement that they can for getting this information out that they don't want out because we have a case where Julian Assange is uh, being prosecuted for publishing information about the US government but he's in England and he's an Australian citizen. So where exactly does the reach of the U.S. stop there? It seems kind of insane that the U.S. can say that we want to go after someone who's not a citizen of the U.S. and is not even in the United States because they published something the United States government didn't like. And you know, the similar things are happening in Australia, too. I know there's a, a person who blew the whistleblower uh, who reported certain war crimes and certain spying at some one of their embassies. Uh, and he's being prosecuted. Instead of going through whistleblower protection, they're just prosecuting the guy. Of course, they're not prosecuting the people who actually did the war crimes. They're just prosecuting him. So there's definitely a chilling effect on these whistleblowers coming out. It's not just from the U.S. government. It's through basically all the five eyes and everyone who the U.S. is entangled with in this material seems to be clamping down on anyone saying anything that the, the U.S. government, military industrial complex and its associates don't want. But, you know, the other the other point there I want to just mention quick is, you know, I do think a lot of these investigative bodies can serve a good purpose uh, because not everything in the sky is that's unidentified is something that's really extraordinary or possibly a you know anomalous non-human intelligence 
object. So, uh, you know, when we see these things, we, we have to go, and they're right in their process, in their idea. When you see these things, you've got to go through this idea of what is the most common thing in the sky that you're likely to see, you know? So you start with, you know, your balloons, parts falling off a of Boeing, uh, meteors, you know, that type of thing. And then if it's not parts falling off a of Boeing, if it's not a door from a Boeing 737, which is a very common sight to see in the sky, uh, bolts falling off a of Boeing, also very common to see in the sky, you know, lots of these things. But if it's not one of those things, then we can get to something that's more unusual. Uh, but I don't think they're doing that. I think they're just going from an angle of trying to explain and dismiss everything that's reported. And I think that's the problem. They have to get out of that mode. They have to admit and be willing to say, we don't know what these are, and just you know, give us some information about them instead of trying to dispel the idea that these are something extraordinary. Well, when there was, it is part of the of the overall press conference that happened with a, uh, a limited audience of people from before that happened before the uh, Aro report came out. Uh, one of the things that was brought up was specifically that there were parts of uh, transmedium craft that had been seen in the past, and Susan Goff was going to go ahead and release this information. And the result, their answer back during the press conference was that, oh, that information, we can't talk about that. That's still classified. We're not going to go ahead and delve into it. So it clearly shows, Peter, if this makes sense from at least a scientific standpoint or just a realistic standpoint is they're trying to take as much information as they can throw out there one after the other, after the other, after the other, with respect to disproving it. But if there's information that can potentially go in the opposite direction, they're leaving that off the table. And unless you ask about it, they're not going to say anything. Does that make sense? Yep. Well, absolutely right. And I think the one glaring example of that that sticks out most is probably when uh, – the Congress was asking about uh, underwater craft, uh, underwater encounters. Transmedium craft, and yeah. they said, oh, well, yeah, oh, well, we, we need to talk about that in the back room. Yeah, oh, that's, we need a, to, that's a question uh, the answer for after was, the hearing. When they asked about transmedium craft, about stuff that had been seen underwater by submarines, the answer from the DOD at that time, I think Ron Moultrie was there, was basically saying that, sorry, we can't talk about that here. We'll talk about that with you in the classified briefing. And you know what? We haven't heard hell from high water, or under the water for that matter, about what the DOD's answer was on those transmedium craft. Apparently, yep, and there I must think, be a there there. Yep, and I think part of the reason for that might be that it's pretty hard to say that they're balloons if they're underwater, right? Because <laughs> balloons tend to float. So and swamp gas. Yeah, or, or, you know, really, really fast birds. Yep, seagulls are out of it. Sorry, McWest. <laughs> uh, Lee, my friend. No, I agree with everything that Peter just said. Um, it's hard to have a conversation about unidentified aerial phenomena when it all of a sudden becomes unidentified anomalous phenomena that are transmedium. Oh, I um, get it. You disagree. You agree with Pete, but disagree with yeah. me. It makes a great metric. No, no, no. That's not. That's <laughs> not what I mean. What I mean is, I, I agree with both of you. I agree yeah. with both of you to 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 the exact points. Um, they're cherry picking the data sets, and even within those data sets, they're not allowing full transparency, and they're not allowing outside data to come into their own data set. So they're working off of a, a, a stud none um, data set. And and let's go back to what Sean Kirkpatrick mentioned during the NASA conference, um, when when it was the joke was made about the meatball, the meatball that's flying around the world, and he said, no, no, that's real. Um, those exist. Yep. And then and then Space Force says, um, yep, it's a worldwide problem. Um, it's global. It's it's not just a U.S. But problem. Space Force saying that was separate from that. Space Force said it was a global problem. In a, it was almost about a year ago today. Th That's they right. came out and had their press conference. That was days of the week. They came out on a Friday. And on Monday, we had the press conference from good old Senator uh uh, Kiki Gillibrand, right. as 
that Patrick would call her, uh, basically going ahead and glorifying everything with regards to denying everything. But the Space Force came out the weekend, the Friday before, saying, yes, it's a global issue. We're working with our partners around the world to go ahead and figure this out because it's not just affecting us. Is that what you're referring to, Lee? That, that's that in part. Yes. The half part. Yes. That's what I'm referring to. The other part that I'm talking about, the other half I'm talking about is when Sean Kirkpatrick actually admitted during that NASA conference that the mazel orb has been witnessed around the world and it's not a meatball. It's a real thing. Um, it, it is, it is unidentified. It is happening. They don't know what it is. Yeah. Now let's fast forward to this report. Was there any mention of that in no. this report? None. Was there any mention um, of the Foo Fighters? None. No. Zero. Zero. None. So that right there tells me this is a bullshit report by his own self-admittance. He's admitted that these spherical mazel ord objects are not meatballs. They're real. They're <laughs> going around. They don't know what they are. Um, but no mention in this latest report about what the hell they are or if they even exist. No, they don't even mention it at all. Yeah. Great points. Before we get to it, Mike, what is your thought on all this? You've been kind of quiet dealing with the chat in the background. What are your thoughts on this situation of what we're dealing with? Would love to hear would love to hear from you. Uh, I've been on troll patrol. Sorry about that. A little occupied, but no, I agree with everything that everybody's been saying. The problem is as far as any positive movement about any type of liability it's not going to happen there's no way kirkpatrick's going to take responsibility there's no clear-cut way to move forward like danny sheehan's talking about uh going after them and prosecuting it, it's just too difficult and complicated of a problem the real solution in my opinion is going to be the truth coming out to the public going to be more disclosure, more information, and eventually when you have enough daylight shining on it, it's difficult to hide like they have been uh, all these decades. And that's what we're trying to do moving forward. That's my opinion. Yeah. Great point, my friend. Great point. It's, it's an interesting conversation now. Uh, we, you know, as, as sure as many people have possibly heard today, cause I think he's got like 30,000 views, if not 35,000 views already. Ross Colhart has st started up a new podcast on YouTube called reality check, Harold, wherever the hell you are, he stole your name. <laughs> and we've got an interesting, oh, I've got, oh God, this is a good one. Let's see if I can bring this up where is it at i'll probably get in trouble for this anyway but i'll do it let's take a look and see we've got there's ross colhart coming in to talk about his new podcast let's go ahead and bring that down let's go ahead and take this and lift it up a little bit let's go ahead and play this little clip we're going to play the intro to his conversation with danny because honestly we've had danny on here before you've heard danny she in many places in the past and whatever danny is going to say is what danny has said many times time and time again all right yes let's go ahead and play this little intro from uh ross colhart about his new podcast that he's got out there it's actually going to be a brand new show on uh news nation that Mike, as we're talking about this today, it sounds like it's something that's more along the lines of 60 minutes, isn't it? Yes, it's he calls it and refers to it as a long form investigative news program, which is something he loves doing yeah. and wasn't paid for it. But now he is through News Nation. So, yeah, it's it's a long form, yeah. long form format of news yeah. moving forward on YouTube. And it's only on YouTube, by the way. Boy, you know, it's great to see he's actually getting some funny. That was one of the biggest things that Matt Ford was complaining about. He can't get enough donations and support to come in, or he can <laughs> go ahead and put his time full time into covering the non-human intelligence. Guess what? Ross Colhart, for how long has not has been donating his time basically to Disclosure. That's part of it. Yes, we get super chats and we deal with stuff here on Disclosure tonight. It helps cover the costs. But do, do I actually get a positive net income to deal with what I could be doing and what I could be bringing in? Not even close. 
On that note, let's go ahead and play this coming in from Ross Kolhart and see what he has to say. Mostly protective of the rights and freedoms that are gifted by that constitution so expressly in your laws. And the reason I care about the UAP issue more than most is because at the heart of the unidentified anomalous phenomena mystery is the question as to whether or not the United States government is misleading the American public and indeed the rest of the world on the truth of what's really going on. I have to say really quick, Mike, has it been a question that the United States government has been lying to us about UFOs going back to 1947, if not sooner? Oh, hell no, Thomas. Not a question at all. I know. I don't know why someone would pose it that way. <laughs> Just Good point. We are honest and on point on this one, my friend. And we exactly. will never veer, veer, uh, veer away from that. Let's continue. Hang on. As you know, in June last year, I did an exclusive story for News Nation revealing the account of David Grush. A... And it's been dead since then. And I'll, granted, we had a hearing and everything else. It has been a downward cascade of information, even though he's had some amazing information he could have brought forward, but he's been sitting on. Let's see where it goes. Former senior, very senior intelligence officer with the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and the National Reconnaissance Organization. And he revealed to me... Ex National Reconnaissance Office. Not organization, N-R-O. Exclusively on television, the shocking revelation that we are not alone. For the first time, an intelligence insider revealed the existence of a non-human intelligence engaging with this planet. Now, Rick, I have to say, was, was, was David Grush coming forward the first person who brought up this kind of information? I don't think he was. No, no, he wasn't. No, yeah. there's, been, there's been many others uh, that came forward way, way before him. No, nothing against Ross. I'm just going ahead and saying, hey, hold on a second here. David wasn't the first. Granted, he has a high level of credibility. Did we forget about Lou Elizondo and others and all the people that came before him? I think that happened. Let's continue on here. He also acknowledged that it was true that the United States government has been involved in what are referred to euphemistically as crash retrievals, and that there is a retrieval program ongoing of non-human technology. There's also a reverse engineering program, a program underway inside now, if there have been crashed craft, Ross, and you know where there's one at, and it's so huge that they can't go ahead and share, move it, why haven't you told us? The U.S. government and private aerospace that is one of the highest kept secrets in the U.S. government. It's a program to attempt to back engineer recovered exotic non-human technology. Now, even before I met David Grush, I knew this was true. The reason I met David Grush was because I heard about him from people inside the Legacy Program. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, you didn't hear from them from uh, Lou Elizondo? You heard it from someone within the Legacy Program? If you know of someone, Ross, within the Legacy Program, stop keeping it quiet and bring us the truth because this is the information we all need to hear. And I will keep on echoing that and pushing, Ross, to disclose your sources bring out the information and let's go ahead and move disclosure forward and stop playing to the playbook of the DOD. These are well, you're not people, the only one that feels that way. Not Mike? Yeah, you're not the only one that feels that way, Thomas, because I don't know if you saw the other day, Ross was talking about on Twitter that he's getting death threats because he hasn't released the uh, location of that giant UFO that's under a building. People are getting pissed off at all of the breadcrumbs he puts out but never follows through just like he said he knows who the gatekeepers are that have been influencing kirkpatrick during arrow and he's not going to release that information he can't listen now. to bad swan i'm sorry
That's <laughs> not a liable, a reliable source to say I'm getting thrusts against me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so your point, you're right, and you're not the only one that feels that way. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there going after him for exactly this, these, this reason it's and the point that you're making. It's a second level of keeping the truth away from the American people. He's another gatekeeper. Let's be honest. He has information that everyone in the world deserves to know. Where's that? There's it. There's. And if he isn't, if Ross isn't willing to give it to us, that just makes him a second, uh, secondary gatekeeper. But the thing is, he has a target on his back because he's volunteered this information is out there. He knows it, but he's not willing to share it with the people of the world. Now, if this is information that can transform the world, Ross, if you truly have this information, what the hell are you waiting for? Just saying. People trying to compromise national security secrets that should continue to be protected. They want the United States and my country, Australia, to continue to flourish as democracies. They love the idea of protecting our democratic freedoms, the constitutional ideas enshrined in your constitution. And what they're appalled about is that there has been an egregious failure that has gone on now for decades inside the national security establishment, which has concealed the existence of a legacy retrieval and reverse engineering program. Now, I know that sounds utterly absurd, and there will be the debunkers and the trolls who suggest that this is all a del But I have to say, why would someone who's talking about this take what they're saying and talking about and saying, what I'm talking about is utterly absurd. Absurd. Huh? Why would you discredit yourself in your own conversation, Mike? Does that make sense? Rick, does that make sense? No, it makes no sense to me at all. I hear what you're saying. And you're right. No. He may not be a gatekeeper for the legacy UAP program, but he's definitely a gatekeeper of information. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, Rick. I didn't mean to cut you off. Please continue, my friend. No, I agree with you, uh, Mike and Thomas. He's, you know, Russ is a, he's trying to do his best, but he has a lack of knowledge about the operating operation of the U.S. intelligence service or the U.S. government. You know, he, he sits there in New Zealand and uh, uh, he reached out to me one time a long time ago, a, a year and a half ago, asked me a whole bunch of questions. I think I'm trying to find him here. Uh, and I don't remember how many. And I, I answered every one of the questions, but most of it was uh, just uh, facts about U.S. intelligence service and how where where is this particular U.S. intelligence agency connected to uh, the Pentagon and so forth and so on. So uh, and obviously he didn't uh, uh, listen or um, ed get educated by some of my answers. But uh, no, go ahead. Mike, uh, Thomas wants you to take over. Okay, LM, go ahead. So even out of his own country, through the Australian Defense Intelligence Agency, um, they've been uh, doing research on uh, plasma and um, organics <clears throat> that exist outside the Earth's atmosphere in LEO. Um, and this is going back to 1967, um, when they started doing this research, and it put forward into 1989. Um, so Ross Colthart is very well aware um, of the fact that there has been um, extra temporal and extra plasmatic research that has been done into um, quantum states and um, what we can what we would consider otherworldly observations. Um, Thomas, you know better than anybody about how Ross brought forward the entire, he pulled the rug underneath the entire CIA and said this Australian report shows that um, not only was the United States Air Force involved, but uh, the CIA was involved in the cover-up. Actually, of, that uh, wasn't Ross Colhard. That was Christopher Scharr from the Liberation Times who broke that story, not Ross. It, it, actually, it actually did come out of, 
uh, well, I don't know where it came from. It came from uh, remember- Christopher Sharp at Deliberation Times. He is fair, the one fair enough, but who, I brought, the, who brought that story to us. It was an, it was an Australian publication. Um, it was an Australian publication that we spent like two or three days going over. That was a different one. Um, that was actually talking about the, the historic about. Uh, reports coming from yes, Australia that went back about. from the 40s up through the 70s. We covered that, but what I'm talking about is what you actually just mentioned was the op- Office of Global OGA, I believe it was called. That was actually uh, brought out by Christopher Sharp. I understand that. I understand that point. In fact, what I'm talking about is the very is the very thing that we talked about right now, which was that Ross Colthart and had had proffered um, this Australian report that that uh, contradicted the um, OSI and CIA investigations during the 1940s and 1970s. Yeah. Um, yes. Now, during that time, the Australian men- the Australian um, Defense Intelligence Agency, whatever it's called. Uh, you know, don't, don't hate me for not knowing exactly what it is, but they were actually doing their own research yeah. into anomalous effects of um, UAP yeah. and plasmatic. Absolutely. Uh, science, but if science. we can get back to this really quick, uh, Lee, I want to try and get through this clip. We got a, a bunch more to go for before we move into it. I want to keep it focused on Ross and where he's at right now. Okay, fair enough. I, I was trying to keep it on Ross, but yeah, I understand. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Illusion. But as you'll hear today from a direct first-hand witness to the existence of that retrieval program... He's not. Flat out. Flat out, this is clickbait. This is wrong information. He is talking about he's going to be bringing out Danny Sheehan. Danny Sheehan saw a picture in the National Archives of a UFO that was potentially recovered. He also saw a close-up picture of some symbols that were shown on the side of the craft. Looking at a picture of this information is not a first-hand witness. It it is a second- or third-hand witness because the person who took the photo, that would be the first-hand whistleblower, the first-hand witness. And Danny Sheehan, no matter how much I love him, is not a first-hand person, so this is wrong verbiage being brought forward by Ross on this. Let me continue. This is just me trying to cut through the shit because I got a message about this earlier today saying that Ross is interviewing a first-hand whistleblower. That means a from the legacy program. That means that person would have been seeing that information firsthand, not looking at a photograph, but actually looking at the craft itself. This is not true, but let me continue. There is direct evidence, and it's just the beginning. There's going to be a long, slow rollout of witnesses and evidence. Fuck the slow rollout of witnesses and evidence. We are behind the gun. We are losing. We're not winning at this point. Now, if you're a gambler, you're going to say, oh, my God, I'm always winning. But the truth of the matter is what we're seeing, what we're going through, a slow rollout, that's the last shit we need. We are so much behind the gun. The public opinion has been changing. Do I need to bring out our friend again? Where is she at? Oh, there she is. There's a public opinion to say we're going to have a slow rollout of this. No. That's the last thing we need is a a slow rollout. We need a blitz of information, a blitz of the truth to go ahead and correct the situation of where we're at. Put before the Congress. Now, it's not that Congress is dragging the chain, by the way. I'm very happy to tell you that I was in Washington, D.C. just a couple of weeks ago. I was strolling the halls of Congress and talking to defence and intelligence insiders, people who care about you, the public, getting the truth. about. And if they told you anything, Ross, that's a violation of our National Security Act. So be careful of how proud you are because you know what? They can go back to the cameras and see who you were talking with and when. What's really going on? And I was stopped on occasion by congressional representatives and indeed two senators, none of whom are actually prominent in the coverage, the news coverage that's been reported to date about the UAP issue. They were thrilled to see me. They knew me from the Grush interview and they wanted me to know 
they care about this issue. They wanted me to know that there is a bipartisan support to get to the truth of the- You hear that, Brock? It's a bipartisan support. The issue of this UAP mystery, not least because they recognize that it's a threat to the constitutional freedoms, the democratic ideas that I love about America. One of the things I'm just- Here's the thing. Danny Sheehan was on this on this podcast a year and a half ago with himself, Lou Elizondo, and Sean Cahill. And Danny put out the plan for a lawsuit going against the United States of America, saying that the National Security Act that was enacted in 1947, yes, shortly after Roswell happened, that that basically transformed us from the United States of America and illegally transformed us into the national security states of America. Where is that lawsuit? What happened to it? Oh, no. We've got information about, please donate to the Paradigm Institute today. Oh, by the way, Paradigm Institute is another, is a, is a pseudonym for the Romero Institute. What is that? Research it, my friends. Us about when I was at law school in New Zealand studying the law in British law, we don't have stipulated, enshrined constitutional rights. You do. You've got your various rights enshrined in your constitution in law. And that makes the role played by constitutional lawyers and professors very, very significant because they can hold the government to account in the courts when there are prescriptions on those constitutional rights by acts of illegality by the state. And I'm sorry to get into a kind of a pointy-headed phase here, but I think this really matters. At the heart of my concern with the... Heart of his concern, pointy... What is a pointy hat? Hopefully not those pointy hats. Well, he likes UAP to go around and issue. around. I know. So we'll, we'll wait for him to drag out his point like he usually does. I know. You've you've had more than enough conversations with Ross off camera. <laughs> yes, I have. You're right. Yeah. I'm familiar with his speech patterns, but go ahead. Play the clip. Yeah. It's the kind of BS that happened last week when the Arrow Historical Review report was tabled uh, in the Congress and presented to the public for the public to see. I knew that this pile of steaming dog turd was going to be a cover-up, and it is. It's an egregious, fraudulent misrepresentation on the American public of the truth of what I and many people know. Then talk about the federal laws that are in place that prevent this kind of bullshit from coming forward. Oh, wait. Maybe he doesn't know them. We'll find out. And the irony is it's going to backfire terribly on the Defense Department and the intelligence community. Because as you will hear today, what has been done in the presentation of that report to Congress is a flagrant breach of, a tr of an extremely important executive order made by President Reagan. Executive Order 1233. This executive... However, however... In the case of national security, people can lie as much as they previously want. So although Ross has done some homework here and he's going to point out to this particular piece, what he fails to bring is that under the National Security Act, people can lie out their fucking ass, Brock whether we like it or not, no lube or lube inquired. They can go ahead and lie as much as they want. Rick and can speak not to be this. prosecuted for it because they're maintaining the security under the National Security Act. Right, Mike? Yeah, they're required to by law, Thomas. If they're in a waived, unacknowledged uh, secret access program, special access program, and Rick can back me up on this, they're legally required to lie if questions about yeah. their information. Right, right, Rick? Is that right? Absolutely. Yep, yep. Yeah, absolutely. 100% right. Yeah. Let's so continue. they're not they're not breaking any laws. So it, it looks like Ross is trying to drag out the suspense, the drama. I know. We're almost through this. We're almost through this. Okay. Other things. Forbids 
the use by the intelligence community of any covert action influence campaign on either the media or public opinion. And now we've caught them red-handed, or so our interview today will allege. Attorney Daniel Sheehan will... Oh, we've seen and heard many times in the past, giving us the information that Ross has to bring out today with nothing new. Matt, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to know one thing. Uh, where is Ross from? Is he from Australia? Australia? All right. So if he was to bring out information uh, involving craft and just say that the, that craft is in Australia, would he get in trouble for uh, relaying any of that message through the Australian government? Rick, what do you think? I don't think so. No, I don't think so, unless it's classified in accordance with uh, Australia. Is he from Australia or New Zealand? Australia. Australia. He's from yeah. Australia. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, okay. I was just saying, uh, if he if if he might get uh, be uh, letting information out about a craft under a building, if it's located in Australia, would he be uh, tried with any kind of information that is? you know, supposed to be top secret, letting that out, even though he was given uh, secondhand um, information on this for him to actually reveal it, would he not? He could actually uh, go ahead and reveal it. If he doesn't want to reveal it himself, he could give it to another party, throw it out there, and the information couldn't come out and be brought forward if he was afraid of any potential repercussions against himself. Lee? I don't think that Ross needs to be like, you know, cascaded upon, but I will say this, and I agree with what you said, Thomas. Um, it's getting close to time for him to put up or shut up about what he knows. And um, it's great that he's been hired by News Nation and that he's going to be a, um, you know, a latchkey kid uh, for this generation to uh, David Grush. That's awesome. That's wonderful. What does he know about Australia? What does he know about Pine Gap? What does he know about what happened during the 60s and 70s with the Australian agreement to cover up the CIA operations within Australia and worldwide? What does he know about that? So how far is he willing to take this conversation? Or is he well, just Well, it depends going to on what through? borders he wants to go into, because if he says enough stuff that's in violation of national security, it'll prevent him from coming to the United States well, without per I'm, persecution. Otherwise, he, if he's back in his home country of Australia, which it looks like, based on this video that he currently is, that in this particular situation, he could get right. hit there. Right. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. And and I'm not asking the guy to put himself in harm's way. What I'm saying is Ross knows people. He doesn't know substance. He only knows something that somebody told him, and that's what he's reporting on. And that's most reporters. That's most journalists. But when you start doing investigative facts and start digging down into the dirt of substance behind it, this man either knows or doesn't know what's going on. And so we're all asking, like, hey, Ross, you make these comments about you know where this UFO is that's gigantic. Well, is that because you know it or is that because somebody told you where it yeah. was? We do, um, have, we, we do have some information coming in from Aloha Dave 13. Aloha Dave 13 says Ross, Ross Colhart was born in the UK, raised in New Zealand, and spent the last 30 plus years in Australia. So that's Ross's that's history for that matter. That is. But Lee, to answer your question, I could tell you real quick that Ross said he verified the location of that giant UFO. Not that it was told second to third hand to him. He verified it. So what does he mean when he says he verified it? He went and saw it. Right. Was exactly well, where no, he didn't say he went and saw it, but he verified it. Whatever verified well, no, no, no. means, hold, hold he on, verified Thomas. the information. If he and if he does have the information and it is verified, Ross, what the hell are you waiting for? I, I, no, Stop on, being a gatekeeper and bring I out agree. the truth. I, Thomas, I agree, but I do want to ask Mike's opinion on this. When a when a research investigator comes forward and says they verified the source, in your opinion, Mike, what does that yeah. mean? 
firsthand, Lee. They saw it for themselves, not someone telling them about it. Yeah. That's what I would But recently, we can say if someone says they vetted the source or vetted the information, we can say it's a complete lie. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, that's, that's the point. truth but on that's, that one. But that's oh. not the way he's stomping in, right, Mike? He's not saying that uh, he vetted somebody's, you know. Um, no, he said he verified, not vetted. There's a difference. Yeah, he said he verified it. And and what does verified, Correct. in your opinion, mean, Mike? You saw the fucking thing, Lee. There That's exactly go. what it means. I've talked to him. I know. I Listen, I can tell you this, and Rick will back me up on this. When you're in law enforcement and you're conducting a criminal investigation, you're not supposed to divulge or release publicly any information about that investigation. And same thing is true as an investigative journalist. It's no different. It's two sides of the same coin. Same rules apply. The difference is that if you have a confidential source that is trusting you, they don't want to be portrayed, not publicly. I get that. But yeah. that being said, I can tell you during the O.J. Simpson trial, that was a huge investigation. And while that was going on, almost every day, they were in there was information being leaked to the press leaked yep. because that happens all the time and either as an investigative journalist or a criminal investigator if you really want something to get out bad enough it leaks i even told ross that in a conversation i had with him i told him give me the address i'll leak the goddamn thing it won't go back to him it'll be anonymous he would not do it so it's up to the individual who it is you're dealing with, who it is you're talking to, who's willing to go the extra mile, and who isn't. And obviously, Ross is not. But I could assure you that if I was in possession of that information, I would. I'd well, find a way. But he, he's catching heat because he said that it was verified. Right. They want to kill him because he's holding it back. Well, I, I, I don't information. agree with that. I think that's all a whole lot of you know unnecessary things. But he did say that he verified it as an investigative journalist that it's real. Yes. Either he's he talked did. to multiple sources and verified it that way, or he's verified the information personally. Either way, verified is verified is verified. There's no way to get around it. If I can, what a great show. I want to go ahead and I want to thank everybody for coming on here to this episode of Disclosure tonight. It's been one heck of a broadcast. Yes, we've talked about, of course, the catastrophic, the Pentagon's path, the catastrophic disclosure. We're here. We're with it, my friends. And we're in, apparently, this is the way it's going to have to go because the, the slow drip of disclosure isn't working, Lou. It's not working, Gary. It's not working anybody. We have to bring it out all at once. We have to go ahead and and swamp these people back into their own swamp for that matter to go ahead and bring out the truth on that note i want to go ahead and thank mr rick Doty. thanks for coming out tonight rick appreciate you being here uh, thank you for having me it was a great show i think we went through a lot of good stuff tonight oh i think we did and as we usually say at the end of every episode of disclosure tonight eyes open no fear be safe everyone but where's it at go back to party city where you belong Absolutely. We'll catch you on the flip side. Good night, everybody. Love you. Y'all come back now. Here, take care now. Bye-bye.